are given this basic function fx is equal to x square. We know the graph of this function. But now, if this be the question, let's say we have to draw y is equal to fx is equal to x minus 3 whole square. So with the knowledge that we already have now, we know how to transform this function. We know that in order to draw x minus 3 whole square, I simply have to take the graph of y is equal to x square and shift it to the right by a distance 3. So this x minus 3 whole square would be simply a parabola that is actually touching at this point, which is 3 comma 0. All other things remaining the same. So this would this curve would result in if uh, uh, this curve would result in actually this graph. So this would be the fun this would be the graph of this function when drawn. What we have done, we have simply shifted this graph by distance 3 to the right. Now let's say we, we create one more change. Let's say this is to be created. x minus 3 whole square plus 4. So we know the process of doing this as well. For this we know that we simply first have to shift the graph of y is equal to x square to the right by distance 3. And then we have to take this graph upwards by a distance 4 because there is a plus 4 over here. So through the knowledge of transformation of functions, which we have already done, transformation of graphs, we know how to actually handle this process. So this would actually create this graph, x minus 3 whole square plus 4. So this is the point 3 comma 0 and this is the point 3 comma 4. The height would be 4 now. We have simply taken this graph and moved it upwards by a distance 4. So this height at this point would be 4. So now by actually just looking at this graph, this function in this graph, there are so many things which we are able to interpret after just looking at this expression and knowing its graph. Because when we know the graph of the function, then we can clearly see in this case, let's say if someone asks me the domain of this function. So can we see that the domain, which means the values of x for which the values of y are possible. So can we see that in this case, whatever be the value of x, whatever be the value of x, we are getting some corresponding value of y. So in this case, the domain of this function is x belongs to all real, straightforward. So we already know that the domain of this function is x belongs to all real. Why? Because we know, we can directly see that this is the graph of a parabola. And for any value of x, we are able to obtain a corresponding value of y. So this, the domain of this function is x belonging to all real. Now let's come to the range. And are we able to see, are we clearly able to see that the values of y, so what, the, what does the range means? Range means that what are the possible values of y that can be taken by simply filling in the values of x in the domain, the, the, simply filling the values of x, what are the possible of y, values of y that we can obtain from this function? So are we able to see that the values of y that we can obtain are actually all values which are greater than equal to, uh, greater than equal to this 4? Any value greater than equal to 4 are obtainable. This graph is going up till infinity. Over here also it is going up till infinity. So the range would be in this case would be all values of y greater than equal to 4. We can see that for any x, for any x, the value of y less than 4 is not possible. And, and just understand this basic concept. Can we see that? For any value of x, the value of y, the corresponding value of y is always greater than or equal to 4. Let's say for example, for this value of x, what is the height? What is the height of the graph? We can see that this height is greater than 4. What is the height at this, this value of x? It is clearly, it is some height which is greater than this height. The height of the over here of y is 4. So the height is actually greater than or equal to 4. So in this case, we can see that for any value of x, the value of y is never less than 4. So the range of this function is range is y greater than or equal to 4. So in a way, we can see that the minimum value of this expression, the minimum value of this expression is actually 4. In this case, the minimum value of this expression is actually equal to 4. So using this understanding, we know that 
we are now capable to actually convert any quadratic expression into a standard form where we can interpret the vertex of this parabola. So in this case, we can directly mention the vertex of this parabola as well. What is the vertex? In this case, the vertex is this coordinate, which is 3, 4. In this case, the vertex is this coordinate, which is 3, 4. It is bending at the point 3, 4. And the axis of symmetry, axis of symmetry in this case is this line. What line is this? This is simply a vertical line x is equal to 3. So in this case, the axis of symmetry is the line x is equal to 3 or x minus 3 equal to 0. It means the same thing. So this line, this line, the equation of this line would be the axis of symmetry. This is a line. So we have to mention the equation of that line. So if we can recall using coordinate geometry, which we have done in grade 10, this vertical line has the equation x is equal to 3. So this is the axis of symmetry. This is the vertex. This is the domain and this is the range. So now let's move to a question which is a bit better than this one which we have done over here. So the task is exactly the same. In the, in the next question also we would be given a quadratic expression and we the task is exactly the same to find the vertex, domain, range, minimum value, maximum value, whatever comes and we have to define it exactly in this manner.